Hey y'all, I am back on my bullshit. Okay, so today we are going back to the Michael Burham Kala Hodgkins case. And da 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 da, Michael was arrested. About time, right? So let's get into what we know. So um, he was arrested after a homeowner's dog alerted the homeowner that someone was in their yard. We find out later in these articles that his name was Anthony Phillips. And we have some photos of Anthony, um, who is the one who called police after his dog alerted him to Michael being in his backyard. There's Michael being arrested being led out of the swamp. Unfortunately, the gators did not eat him. I was really hoping for that. That is all the police who were outside of the park where he was hiding in Huger, South Carolina. Um, the police who were working on catching him and ultimately detained him. Those were photos from a Walmart in the area that he was at. People did alert police. They were not able to get there quickly enough. Um, apparently, they were ready to catch him by boat if he tried to swim, too. So um, an alert went out to the area at 8.23 p.m. on Wednesday, saying law enforcement has spotted a fugitive in the area of Huger, Awenda, Siwi, Northern Mount Pleasant, and McClellanville, white male, mid-30s, 5'9", 150 pounds, last seen in blue shorts, gray shirt, on a bicycle. So remember, bro, him, he's got a thing with stealing bicycles, because remember back when he was in New York, um, and when he went and hid in the woods, there was an abandoned bike that was found tossed off of the bridge right near where his car was that his truck was found abandoned so he's got a thing with stealing bikes this is the second bike that he's stolen during his um expedition and trying to evade justice and i don't know why the alert went out at 8 23 when like they already had him arrested by 5 15 seems a little late so there's um, someone from the sheriff's department giving a statement. There's Michael with the fucking bike, the second bike that he stole. And this is the area where he was spotted and apprehended right in here. Okay. So here we go. Berkeley County, South Carolina. Around 5 p.m. on Wednesday, 34-year-old Michael Burham was caught and arrested near United Drive and Halfway Creek Road in Berkeley County, putting an end to the lengthy state and federal search, which that is what this map is from right here. Michael Burham is in custody, Berkeley County Sheriff Dwayne Lewis said. 911 received a call at 3.30 this afternoon that they spotted a suspicious individual behind their shed at their residence at 2260 United. A canine tracking team spotted him, I think twice during the pursuit, and he was taken into custody at 517 behind the wooded area in the residence. The FBI says Burham has been on the run after committing a spree of alleged crimes, including murder and the R word. I can't even say either of those. Well, there goes monetization for the video. Good thing I'm not monetized, right? Yeah. He's also accused of kidnapping an elderly couple in Pennsylvania. My last live, um, I had Joni Goose, who is their daughter, on my live stream telling me what happened. Go check that out. Um, an elderly couple in Pennsylvania and then dropping them off in North Charleston. Several law enforcement agencies, including the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office, were looking for him until his capture and arrest. We kept moving and kept adjusting, Lewis said. We had a lot of tips that were nothing, but we're happy that the public did call us because that's what we asked for. Before he was arrested, the FBI says Burham had been reportedly cited several times and even came into contact 
with a um, Berkeley County Sheriff's Officer deputy the morning of May 23rd, but he was able to get away. I was on the bike. Apparently, he's really good with bikes. After days of Burham being on the run, officials say he was not in the best shape when they arrested him. He was not in good shape, Lewis said. He looked like he had been in the woods for some time. We gave him some water and kept him hydrated again. And while EMS was checking him, he had blurted out that he had been on the run and he wanted something to drink. Officials say they were grateful to the couple who spotted him. Burham is being held at the Al Cannon Detention Center in North Charleston on two out-of-state holds. Here is his mugshot. Right here it says um, federal hold, and then he has two out of state holds below that. So going back into this, the search for Burham began in Jamestown, New York, where he was charged with the R word and unlawful imprisonment of a woman for an incident on March 13th, 2023, police said. Burham is also believed to be related to the Mert. Murder of 34-year-old Kala Hodgkin on May 11th. What? Hold up. Okay, so I thought that the R and kidnapping happened before he unalived Kala. Everyone has been saying that it happened before. How, where in his run from police did he unlawfully imprison and are somebody? This has got to be some kind of typo. This can't be right. Because this would mean that after there was already police looking for him, and while he was hiding in the woods, he came out of the woods and are and kidnapped somebody. That doesn't make any sense. No. And I've seen like several things where people are saying that this happened before Kala was unalived. So that's damn ABC. You got to do better work. You got to keep up with the web sleuths, homies. You just printed some misinformation. That's embarrassing. Okay, Burham allegedly drove a rental car from Pennsylvania to the area of the New York homicide, then returned his rental car the next day to Warren, Pennsylvania. Law enforcement described Burham as a suspect and a person of interest in the case. He then kidnapped an elderly couple at gunpoint on May 20th. We know about that. Driving the couple from Sheffield, Pennsylvania to North Charleston, South Carolina. So this is interesting. Due to national attention that this case is now receiving, we are receiving multiple tips from across the country regarding Burham's whereabouts, Jamestown Police Department wrote Saturday. A tip from South Carolina resident on Tuesday afternoon breathed life into the search, though officers could not respond to the report quickly enough to spot Burham themselves. We did not get that information, however, until about 7 o'clock that night after the newscast and after you publicized that, Charleston County Sheriff Kristen Graziano told reporters. Graziano urged the public to keep a watchful but concerned eye for Burham. So the police are being called about these things, yet it's being reported by web sleuths and crime reporters before the police even know about it? I don't know whether I should be flattered or really alarmed. It's one of the two though. I feel like the police should have known about that before the web sleuths did. I don't really feel like there's much reason for that not to have happened. All right, so this is where they named the person who found him. OK, 
Okay, Burham spent Wednesday night in a detention center in Charleston County after Anthony Phillips alerted authorities that he saw him in his backyard. Anthony Phillips of Huger, South Carolina, is the fucking hero here. Phillips said he spotted it and his dog, because remember, the other article said that his dog alerted. So, Anthony Phillips and his dog. I want to know who the dog is. I want to see a picture of the dog. Someone send me a picture of the dog. I would love to... And Anthony. I mean, we already got some pictures of Anthony, but specifically the dog, because I don't know what the dog looks like, and I bet he's a very good boy. Philip said he spotted the then-fugitive peeking around the corner of his shed and confronted him. He stood up and said, I'm not going to hurt anybody, Philip said. I'm just going to leave. Burham then made a break toward a path in the forest behind Phillips's house where authorities later apprehended him, which, where is that? That is the break. That is the path behind his house that Burham ran out to. This is the shed that he was hiding behind. And this is Anthony Phillips, the brave ass man who went out and confronted him and then called the authorities. Thank God that he got caught, Phillips said. Federal documents also revealed the timeline and new day details of the 34-year-old's list of alleged crimes. The crime started the beginning of the 13-day manhunt in Jamestown, where Burham allegedly arred and unalived 34-year-old Holla Hodgkin, Holla Hodgkin before setting her vehicle on fire. Are we really doing this? Are we really getting all of this information wrong? News stations, we're really doing this. This is just, why? Why? Because it wasn't, it wasn't, no, it wasn't Kala's car that they set on fire. That did not happen. Like, Hold up. I'm pulling it up. I thought I was only going to have to go over the newest slides, but apparently not. Apparently I got to go over the old slides too. This is why I have so many screenshots and pay for extra storage because of shit like this. All right. So bear with me. We're going through here. Okay. Okay. It's not it. I'm going to find it. I know I got it. Where was his ex whose car was set on fire the night Kala was unalived? Fulton Street. Right. It wasn't even the same street. Kala lived on Winters. She lives at 125 Winter Street, which I covered that in my first video of this. And then right here, Nick Sherry is the ex who got her car set on fire. It was not Kala. So she says right here, Nick Sherry, the ex, me, whose car he set on fire, was at home with her underage child and stepdad and provided camera footage, proof, alibi, and witnesses to the police department, as well as my own boyfriend being with me that night inside of our home. Okay. So <laughs> explain to me... Explain to me, make it make sense. Make it make sense why WGRZ is saying that Kala is the one who got her car set on fire. See, this is frustrating. People be like reporters and shit, like working for newspapers, supposedly professional 
and they are publishing information that is not true. I don't know what the world has come to when web sleuths and internet detectives, community police are the ones who are getting the correct information and knowing things and giving it to the public before the actual police and actual reporters who are supposed to have some journalistic integrity get it. Make that make sense to me. Make that make sense to me. That's just absurd to me that people are going to read this and think that it's true. If I hadn't been researching this for the past two weeks and keeping track of everything, I would have thought this was true too, because ostensibly, if it's published in a newspaper, you would think that it's researched. Disappointing. Extremely fucking disappointing. Do I have the person who wrote this article? I do. Andy Payton. Fuck you, Andy, and your shoddy ass excuse for reporting. Like, Jesus Christ. Do we even know if this guy's name was actually Anthony Phillips? No, I don't know. Hopefully it was. Hopefully Andy got that part of the article right. Okay, so he's hopefully this part is right too. Okay, we've already raised some doubts about Anthony or Andy's journalistic abilities. But um, hopefully this part's right. And hopefully the name of the person who alerted the police is correct. Okay, days later, he kidnapped and forced an elderly couple at gunpoint in Pennsylvania to drive him to South Carolina. It was there that investigators found a letter from Burham intended for his father in which the suspect said he is sorry for all the problems I caused the family, but I'm not sorry for what I did. So if this letter is in fact real, I'm sure that we will be seeing that offered into evidence at the trial. I'm going to go ahead and stop reading anything Andy said or WGRZ said because what the fuck? And then also, I don't understand why they're saying that the R and unlawful imprisonment started the manhunt. He already had warrants out for the R word and unlawful imprisonment before he went and did this to Kala. Just absolutely don't understand why ABC, like even ABC is getting this wrong. Mind blowing, truly mind blowing. Pieces of, let's see, do I have anything on that right here? I probably do, let me see. Here, it's right here, see, I got it. This is why we get the screenshots, Roman Banks. He was on the 10 most wanted for warrants for imprisonment and R before he did that other shit. So did stupid New York state decide to drop the imprisonment and R charges? Don't sugarcoat it or try to hide the fact he was set free after kidnapping and Ring someone and then went on to commit arson and unaliving. He has done more and is wanted for more than what your post mentions. And the post that they're talking about was amended after this for the article to say that he was wanted for those things previously as well. So just shoddy investigative work, disappointing, but that's why you guys have me who spends hours pouring through screenshots and articles and has the memory of an elephant and is here to give you the actual scoop. Did not expect this to turn into such a shit talking session, but shit talking happens when shit talking is due. And it was definitely due here. All right, guys, um, I will keep covering this case. I can't wait for this to go to trial. This is going to be epic to watch this piece of shit get justice served. I don't think he's going to take any accountability. I think he's going to justify this and drag it out as long as possible, like the cowardly piece of rat shit that he is. You let me know what you think he's going to do in the comments down below. Like, sub, and share if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you guys later. Bye.